Welcome to a new series of IB Physics in the topic of Mechanics, Chapter 2. So we will start with motion in 2.1. Normally I will ask you to read the textbook and uh, answer the questions, but for this part I would like you to try without reading the textbook and based on your prior knowledge as you learn from IGCSE also. So here are four equations, I will call it simply um, 1, 2, 3, 4. And these equations are actually called in physics called kinematics equation because that involves motion basically. Uh, just before you start to prove it, uh, I will let you know that V, the representation of V, U, A, T, and S. So V actually represents the, actually you should know, final velocity. While for U is the initial velocity. A is apparently acceleration and then t is time, s is displacement. So be careful it's displacement instead of distance. So uh, basically except time, all other four are all factor. One thing that you may want to um, also know before you start is um, what are the assumptions, what is the assumption uh, in all these equations. And the assumption I can tell you first is uh, a, acceleration must be constant so it must be the same number throughout the whole motion so you may want to pause the video now and try to prove it yourself it helps you to understand more about physics if you really don't know how to do it you may want to read from the textbook page 35 to page 40 so you'll be able to find out uh, some proof uh, done by the textbook 2,000 years later. Okay, so for the first one, it's actually uh, done by the definition of A. So if you study in IGCSE, you know the definition of acceleration. Uh, more formally, in physics, it's actually using differentiation. So D, V over DT. But then if you don't use differentiation, it's fine because acceleration here should be constant. So that would mean uh, delta V over delta T, and that is V minus U final minus initial over T. And if you look at um, acceleration and V minus U over T, then you can rearrange it and you will be able to get to the first equation. So A T equals to V minus U and then that will get you V equals to U plus A T. So this is for the first equation. For the next one, I would like to draw a graph of V T graph. And since we already assumed the object is moving in a constant acceleration, then we can draw a straight line of an object starting with the velocity of u and ending it with a velocity v, final velocity, after a given time t. And we start the time from zero. So then you can have the change of time as remain as t still for the delta t. And in fact, when we do the calculation for all this formula here, uh, all the t that we are referring is actually a change of time not just the time because time is actually a relative idea also so um, recall one fact that the area under the curve or a line of a vt graph will actually means displacement and then you can then refer this displacement to the s in our equation and therefore you can write down s equal to the area of this trapezoid which is the upper base u plus the lower base v times the height t since this is uh, t minus zero divided by two and if you look at this this is basically equation four so we have already done equation four and equation one for the next one you simply just have to uh, reuse the two equations uh, where you substitute the v away so let me show it to you so take uh, the equation 4 again s equals to u plus v right so the v let's replace it with the one that we have from the equation 1 so it will be u plus 80 and keep the remaining things the same then you can just expand it by uh, becoming s maybe 2s equals to 
u2 plus a t square and then you just divide actually I can keep the half on the other side anyway so at the end you should get s equals to u plus half a t square which is actually equation number two so we have done uh, three equations in total so for the last one number three is probably the most trickiest but if you are smart enough you can see that for each equation here they actually all have four variables in each equation so for example for the first one is v u a and t second one is s u t a number three is v u a s number four is s v u t and each of them actually missed out one variable so let's take a look for the first one actually you don't have what you don't have s so no no s number two you don't have v number three you don't have t number four you don't have a so you can imagine uh, this is because there are only five variables right uh, initially i talk about that and basically you you just try to substitute that particular thing that since you don't have it away so if you're smart enough then you will see that we just have to substitute t away so maybe it will be useful if you take equation one again then you can express t in terms of v minus u over a as in t that is from equation one and then you can grab uh, either one of the equation and then you can work on it so maybe let's substitute it into equation four so equation four is that s equals to v plus u over two equals to t so we can uh, substitute that with t so v minus u over a okay so and in that case then we can get um, the 2a on the other side of so 2as equals to v plus u i'm trying to do it a bit slower but you should know that this is something that you learn in mathematics where it's x plus y times x minus y something like that and that will give you v square minus u square equal to 2as and uh the form is simply you can rearrange it to v square on one side and then the other thing on the other side so v u square plus 2as so this is how we can prove equation number three so once again i would like to remind you that the assumption is very important that the acceleration must be constant because when you prove it then you know you should realize that we all did this based on the fact that of course a is a uh, is constant therefore we can express it using this v minus u over t and also on the graph like this where the line is straight line so then the area will be a trapezoid instead of maybe something like this if it is uh, changing or if it is like this if it is changing so then the area apparently is different under the curve okay so then uh, the expression of s would be different in that case so all this uh, will be under the assumption of a must be a constant